name is Jorge, Jorge Perez Rubio. Um, I am a former art teacher and uh, still a teacher and uh, I'm an artist um, working and living in Piedmont, South Carolina um, as of 10 days ago. Well, let's talk about your journey to Piedmont. How did you get to Piedmont, South Carolina? Okay, well, um, I was, um, I started well, let's say, I'm originally, I, originally I worked in advertising and uh, something happened in the mid-90s where I started teaching and I worked through uh, museum education first and I got away from, from the corporate uh, advertising after going through a big change there with the technology um, and uh, it was a really fascinating time. But I ended up teaching and then an opportunity came up to teach art with, ironically, with technology, with the computers. And um, I, I went into teaching full time, and I taught for about uh, ten years and uh, eight years in in the states. And then uh, before, just before 9/11, my, my wife and I moved to Cairo, Egypt, for a handful of years. And uh, then since then, we've been teaching overseas until the pandemic, and that's what brought us back. And uh, we came back <clears throat> in uh, February of 2020 and landed in Philadelphia uh, with my wife's family and it was interesting and uh, over time we kept visiting my family that now lives in Greenville, South Carolina. My sister's been here for a long time. My brother's been in Atlanta since college and uh, we were going back and forth and uh, the ice and the cold and the pandemic and uh, family is why we're down here. Uh, to be near my brother and sister and my mom um, who's with my sister and uh, and uh, that's the first thing that brings me down here. By chance um, I was also working on um, a fabric project when I got back from from China and uh, the people I was working with in Pennsylvania were was, was, it was challenging the Amish have a lot of rules about the quilting and the, the fabric and, and the design and, and uh, it was tough. Maybe it was the pandemic times, I don't know. But my sister said that this was the textile belt and of course it was. And, and I realized, well, gee, and uh, <laughs> came down here and I was surprised to find a really healthy art scene with a lot of crafts people and, 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 and artists working in different things and uh, different than the Northeast um, in a lot of ways. Um, and uh, mainly, mainly the fabric. So I found to, to uh, this group of people, I, I met um, these, these quilters, um, first at Marietta's uh, in Simpsonville, and uh, eventually um, I met this one particular lady, uh, Dawn, who uh, shared my vision for what we were trying to do, these, these scrolls, the scroll art, and uh, it's a kind of an east meets west thing, but it has to be done with a painter and a holy man, and uh, and a fabric artist. So we started working together with uh, this group of people from the University of Chicago and through the, through the and, and, and other schools and uh, the gallery that I work with in Washington, D.C., which is eight hours away, which is perfect for me. Uh, the project is coming together and, and that'll be showing uh, this spring, summer uh, in Washington. So. I want to come back to that, um, yeah. but I want, to, I want to back up a little bit further. At what point in your life did you realize you had an eye for art? Were, were you young? When did oh. you realize you really fell in love with art? I've been asked this before, and my mom loves this, because she taught me how to draw. I mean, of course, I went to school, um, and I was encouraged, and I had some great art teachers along the way. Um, I don't teach university. I didn't want to teach college, because at that point, I felt like the craft, the, the drawing, drawing is like writing, and you have to start that really early on, so I, I was really interested in... in well, I ended up teaching pre-K to grade 12 for, for many years uh, in different capacities um, and uh, integrating the, the art curriculum with the international uh, programs and uh, the national curriculums of those countries. And uh, lo and behold, you know, the shapes are the same in, in different cultures. There's yeah, circles and squares and triangles and they work kind of the same way. And uh, it was neat to blend all these traditions. and. Uh, over time, part of what I was doing was searching for this, this way of turning pictures into books. Because I went to a writer's college, and I'm not a writer, but drawing is like writing. And, I, and I've taught drawing for many years. And um, the whole idea of this, these, the scroll art kept coming up. And uh, everything from the bio tapestry 
um, to, to comic books, to, but, but there's something about the Tonka uh, form mat that's very, very long lasting and has a long tradition and uh, it's, it's, it's not as far fetched as we think it is now um, because we as modern Americans understand a lot of the Eastern influences. I mean, for me, it was since the 60s and all the people I, I grew up with and all my Where teachers. Ah, geez. All right, so I went to, st we moved around every two or three years, and uh, my, my grandparents were in New York, but we, um, when I turned, when I was in eighth grade, the school ran out. It only went up to, to, to eighth grade in that country, uh, which is a common thing in the 70s. And, and uh, I went, so I went to boarding school. Well, that was in Venezuela. Um, Brazil, Colombia, Venezuela, Guatemala. My sister was born in Guatemala, but we're not. I mean, we're all American. We're all Cuban Americans. My parents were, came from Cuba, and uh, you were telling me your dad, your grandfather came about the time of the revolution, right? Yes, they came in '59. Um, it's funny because over time, my brother and sister stopped. They, they, they. I mean, my sister traveled a little bit and uh, lived overseas for some time, but and my brother works internationally, which is. Funny because, but he's based in Atlanta. He stayed in Atlanta, but I kept, I sort of kept going. We kept going, and uh, it just feels like home now. Is the only thing that I can say. Not, not just because my my brother and sister, but but I've been, I felt really welcome here. Um, everyone's been very, you know. There's an influx of other um, uh, people from not from here, and uh, so far, it's it's it can be a, a benefit to to. The society. One thing that I get complimented on is seeing things with fresh eyes. You know, you, sometimes you drive right past something and you've seen it for 40, 50 years and you don't even know what it is even anymore. And, and then, you know, and then it sort of is uncovered. And there's also a, a, a sort of a national focus on, on um, revolutionary war sites and historical sites. And uh, there's something about uh, the town of Piedmont and this, this the, the historical mill village uh, that is that is very, uh, that is of national significance, that's, that's, that's important um, to, to a lot of things that have happened over the course of, of um, U.S. history. Um, so it's a really um, exciting time to be here because there's, there's a lot of change, uh, rejuvenation, revitalization, I don't know what you call it. Um, and, and it's happening, and it doesn't happen everywhere, but uh, it's happening here. Um, and that's why it's exciting to, to be here. You seem like you spent a lot of time getting to know the region and the area <laughs> and its history too. I want to tell a, I want to tell a story of how we actually ended up here, because um, we were driving past. So so I'm driving from Atlanta to my sister's in Greenville, and uh, we travel with Butterscotch. who's a cat, and he had to pee, and uh, he travels, so he knows. He's got a sign. He goes to, on the airplanes. He used to go in the room. And, that's another story, but, but um, he scratched and we were near Piedmont and uh, my sister kind of had said Piedmont before and we pulled in uh, right by the community center, there's a big parking lot and there were some trees there, some grass and butters jumped out and uh, there's a lady, Carolyn Reeves, um, who was uh, in a part, who works with uh, Charlene Speltz and, and, and Dr. Payton in the uh, community center, um, which is the temporary home of the museum uh, that's coming. and. Uh, they butters sort of followed her in, and they they met him, and, and he led us into the museum, and they were very nice. And uh, from there, um, uh, we learned that they have uh, certain hours that they're open on Tuesdays, and 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 uh, the community center is sort of getting up and going again. And we we were really charmed by the valley with the Saluda River and the old dam and the electric plant, and and even the the bridge on 86. There's a lot of um, of geographic beauty to this, to this spot, but, but also, um, like I said, the history. So the museum that's, that's going to be opened uh, next year, uh, when the town turns 150, I've heard. The old YWCA. The, yes, yeah. the old YWCA building that was re that's being restored right now uh, through the, uh, the uh, Piedmont Historic Preservation S uh, Society. And um, that uh, we have uh, people from, from um, the Smithsonian that are coming down and setting up the displays and a lot of people from the community that are actually bringing ar artifacts and, and, and photographs. Photographs are, are awesome to look at because you can, as a landscape painter, you can recreate certain areas 
based on, on pictures of people, you don't realize this barn was in the back or this tree was in the back. Or, so it's interesting to look at all that and help them catalog um, all that information. But a lot of what is in the museum, or what will be in the museum, is, is frankly, it's in, it's in people's homes. It's in the, you know, somebody brought in an old suitcase the other day with all kinds of papers, and uh, that was fascinating. And they were family, and they were sitting in the... So um, it's, it's, it's important for, the, for them to reach out to the community so that we can help preserve the area while it's changing. Uh, that's the tricky part, because it is changing. Um, and uh, I, I've, been, I've been in places where things are changing a lot, especially overseas. And uh, you know, when you're an expat as an American, you put a lot of things aside and everybody kind of gets along because of where you come from. And uh, there's a lot of division up north when we first came in. And, and, and uh, this is a really healthy area, and I hope it stays that way. Um, everybody takes care of each other and themselves, takes care of themselves. And, but, but if um, something's not done, it might, it might uh, grow up too fast. I don't know. I don't know. But it's a curious mission that the museum has, and I hope it'll help to bring the, the Mill Village together. Um, and maybe put it on along the path of a historic, you know, these kinds of things, these kinds of towns are very, you know, you go drive through, through Connecticut or Massachusetts and you see them like every time there's a little, a little stream, somebody put up a mill in 1750. But, you know, when you come, when you head south, um, just because of the, I think the industry, it was different. It was, it was um, agricultural. These towns are not the, there are not that many of them. This one, Pelzer, the old chain down to Anderson um, are, is, is brilliant, it's beautiful. And it's grown up through the Industrial Revolution and it's gone through a lot of, you know, Industrial Revolution and um, stuff, hardship and, and joy and uh, history, which is what it sort of boils down to. And uh, I, uh, I'm just grateful that, that it's a beautiful place to land and I felt so welcomed here. And uh, I don't know if I'll return to a classroom uh, anytime soon. Um, I, I know I'm, I might be doing some work with the Lawrence uh, uh, Museum, the Lawrence County Museum, um, doing some illustrations for a Revolutionary War path, uh, a Revolutionary War driving uh, tour. I might offer some workshops, some drawing things, because I, I think drawing is important. I think it's something that a lot of skilled uh, workers need to draw to visualize what they're doing. Uh, a lot of people who plan things. You know, when I was in art school, a lot of, a lot of my classmates were doctors. And because and, they had to read x-rays and, 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 and they were in all these anatomy classes and learn how the body moved and, and uh, just, just uh, learning textures and how to see things. And, uh, and uh, that's, that's, that's why drawing is important, I think. Um, and it's a skill that needs to be taught in schools and you need to practice that, just like math and uh, reading and writing would be a good thing for people to, to do on occasion instead of just this and this. Uh, but that's that's the school teacher, that's the art teacher talking. Um, photographs are great, but even photography classes, uh, you don't uh, teach the principles of framing a shot, lighting, uh, all those things that are important. Composition. Um, it's great, the digital stuff is great, but, but some of the art still needs to, to be established. Um, and people will take better pictures. And it's not just the filters, people. It's, it's how you frame the shot and the moment. That, that's what photography is tricky. I can take all day to make a drawing and crumple it up and start again. But photography is, is the moment thing. Could you see this area continuing <clears throat> to grow as like maybe an artist place, an artist colony type place? Well, that's not why that's not why we moved here, but uh, mainly because I was my my family was here, and but it is beautiful, and uh, there are a number of working artists in the area. That uh, um, there's a photographer Paul Porter who's been working in the area for a long time. Uh, Jack Elberg, Ellenberg. Um, there are a lot of strong traditions in in some ceramics flying around. Um, in this area, just at the foothills, you know, from here all the way up to Asheville, people people. Um, are settling um, for lots of different reasons. I don't want to blow the horn on, on everybody come here, but it is beautiful and it works for us um, as a place that has potential. Um, and it's, that's kind of the inevitable, inevitable part of it. 
um, even though we've lived in cities that had 30, 40 million people all our lives. Uh, Atlanta's just right over there. And you can get in traffic right away at N85 right here if you want to go to Atlanta. <laughs> um, but, but being between Anderson and Greenville is a very nice, you know, that's, this is also very curious. Piedmont is, you know, there's a bridge. Um, both counties have a lot to benefit uh, bouncing off each other. You know, then there's Lawrence and, and Spartanburg east, but those are facing east. If you're going north-south, this is the sort of the, the, the path. Um, you know, going back to the 1700s, <laughs> the shoals here, this is, this is still the only bridge, which is kind of a problem with the traffic, but, but bison and, and elk and, 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 I don't know, beavers and hogs were, were crossing here thousands of years ago before, you know, we sh you know the Europeans showed up. Um, and uh, the Cherokee have a name for it, and it's, uh, it's still, it's, so it all boils down to geography and landscape, and uh, I think location. And as a landscape painter, that's the question that I look for is it's location, location, location. And uh, the other thing is an art teacher is the way you get to, to, uh, to perform as you practice and practice and practice. But location is, is not just in real estate, the top rule, but in, in, in history and settlement and civilization, um, location is important. And this is a, that I can't, I didn't bring it here and I, didn't, I, I recognize it. And uh, I think other people do too by the looks of what's going on around town. Um, and I'm just happy to have a sort of a front row seat to a lot of the history that's coming back um, to the area, which is significant um, nationally. And then, and then who knows, internationally, if we set a good example here in Piedmont. But it's a, it's a nice place to be right now. I hope for the future. Could I backtrack a little bit? And, Absolutely. And actually, it's impossible to do this without like a couple of visual aids, if that's all right. Um, would you? Want me to talk and then you Let's both pan over it? Issue, or? Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, well, the first thing I'm doing right now is um, I just had a, um, a corporate commission go up in Washington, D.C. Of, of a painting of Washington done from the Virginia side that's going to be going to a, 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 a building on the, on the Virginia side. And uh, that is up um, in Washington, D.C. Uh, at Carroll Square, uh, which is right in front of the National Portrait Gallery. And uh, it's a public art space, and this is part through, um, through the Studio A gallery that I work with, that I've been working with for years, through Aaron Pomerantz, who's a longtime friend and benefactor, and, and other patrons in the area that have encouraged me to work there. And, and um, this is the fourth large painting that I have in, in, uh, that I've done in Washington, but I've done lots of others. Um, it's a city that especially as an expat you identify with as our national city as our as as home uh you fly in and out of there i did and uh and uh that's why it became a subject um but even even in high school um before you know had grandfather clause at 18 you go down to georgetown from pennsylvania but um as as a young man i was attracted to the city because having traveled overseas it's a beautiful city and it's designed on, on purpose and it's uh, it's got a lot of art and function to it and uh, it also documents the uh, it's a record of our, our American civilization and and uh, that was neat so I so I was always sort of attracted to I've been sketching Washington DC for forever um, and uh, so that's something that I'm that, I, that I'm, I'm proud of that's up there now there's a reception later this month and um, then, then through Studio A, uh, what brought me down here originally was working with uh, these, these quilters and fabric artists and uh, working on these, these tankas. And a tanka is, a tanka is a uh, T-H-A-N-G-K-A for spellers, is a uh, Sanskrit word for a scroll. For a, for a, it's not a book, it's discussions, it's a book art, it's a scroll art, it's any kind of scroll. And um, I worked on these silk scrolls in Japan and Korea and China, and I worked on these different ways of presenting the work. Um, it's a conspiracy, the whole Western framing on a wood and glass, and I don't know. I wanted to, a different way of, of uh, portraying the work. And what appealed to me about the scroll is that it was a, a combination of a book and a picture. Um, not a comic book, but, but it a, it's a, it's, it's, can be considered a book. You know, the Torah is a book, it's a scroll. Um, 
it, as an art form, it, it combined drawing and writing for me. <clears throat> so, so and, and I went to a writer's college, and I've learned, I, I, I appreciate writing, and I think language is important, uh, but I like pictures. And uh, I wanted to put the two together, and, and in terms of making an art form that, that combines books and, and art, and, and, and drawing being like writing, and, and so I studied different types of book formats in this Tonka scroll art form, and it's, it's extensive, it's a thousand, five thousand year old tradition, I don't know, um, just these ones, these in India and, and in China. Um, but you also have modern renditions like the Bayo Tapestry, which is horizontal and you can read it all the way across. And, um, so that is what, I wanted to find the right people to work with the fabric and make these. Um, through a place that closed, I got an out of print book from a friend through, um, from a Buddhist friend and uh, on how to make these, a pattern book essentially. And uh, I have some of these old pattern books that I've picked up in Nepal. And, and uh, so we're making these tankas and I, and I sh shopped them around and first we landed after the pandemic in Pennsylvania and uh, went to some Amish people and, and there's a lot of rules in, in, in the German sort of tradition of quilting and fabric art and couldn't really get, find the right group of people. And then my sister, who'd been in Greenville forever, uh, said to this was the textile belt, and what was I, you know, duh, come down to, to Greenville and, uh, and the Greenville area. And, and I've gotten, so Greenville is bustling and it's too much and we're trying to avoid the Northeast uh, maximum capacity. And especially after living in, in Cairo and New York and Shanghai and, and, and it's just, so we were looking to go, and, and so it, and my brother's in Atlanta, so we kept driving this little stretch between Greenville and Atlanta. <laughs> and uh, one day we fell in love with Piedmont, and that's the story of Butters and the Historical Society. Um, but in the meantime, I found these uh, quilters, uh, especially Dawn, this one, this one quilter, who, who helped me realize we worked together, and she studied the, the patterns, and we put, and we're now doing variations on this Tonka art, and uh, other artists have done, uh, other American artists have done um, um, Tonka-inspired art. Uh, I'm blanking out right now. Uh, Cunningham in New York, uh, and, and since the '60s, and uh, it's it's kind of it's kind of developed. And now it's not a you know people are used to seeing mandalas and and, and, and tankas and Buddhist art and Eastern art, so it's more of a recognizable feature. And uh, we're, we're going to call these American Tonka because it's it's an American it's an American Tonka, and uh, they're not consecrated, so they're not official religious items. Uh, they're more uh, iconic uh, American uh, Tonkas, taking this this Eastern art form that I think I was over there for ten years to study. <laughs> How time consuming is that that art form? Takes a long time. Um, well, it's funny because over I had a couple of signs in my classrooms over the years that I just had to like. Th that one, the answer to your question is art takes time. Art takes time, and it can be a lot of time or short time. But there's the, the applied art time, and there's also the conceptual, uh, compositional time. Um, but art takes time, which is something we don't we don't uh, we don't have time to, to read, or, or we don't take time to, or budget our time differently. Modern times, very complicated. But time is different, and some of these skills that take time, learning an instrument, <laughs> learning how to draw, uh, reading and writing, uh, take time. So it takes, uh, but in short answer, it takes about a year from projection. We're, we have, we're going to show uh, 10 to 12 uh, uh, pieces in Washington, and uh, we're excited to bring both, you know, for us to bring uh, the, the South Carolina tradition of fabric art, um, which extends there's a rich tradition of, of, of art, uh, slave art that's created, um, and not just the, the quilts, and, but there, there's, a, there's a lot of fabric down here. And uh, there are a lot of talented artists, and uh, just sort of bringing that together. I don't think I could have done this if, if we moved out west or if we'd stayed up in the northeast. Pennsylvania was the only place that I could really think about that had a, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts. Um, but it's here, and, and, and uh, it's, it's a beautiful, rich tradition. And uh, there's other um, artists working in, in, in on this whole belt between Greenville and Atlanta and also Anderson that are, that are potters and, and quilters and, and woodworkers. And that, that um, I think, as, as things get more expensive, the value of those things will go up, not just in the value of the things, but also in learning those, those things. And there's a lot of um, 
not just the, the Piedmont, not just the community center, um, but there's, there's organizations that are coming together um, all around here um, that people should take advantage of because um, they're not as crowded as the 92, uh, 92nd Street Y in, in New York. <laughs> Is there something that you've been wanting to do that you haven't had time to do yet? Is there some, some project you've yeah. on, your, on your want to do list? I, um, absolutely. Um, in fact, I have a lot of things on my, on my docket, I guess. Uh, one particular project that I'm working on, but it's a two or three year project, um, depending on the timing, um, is we're, we're working with the Lawrence County uh, Museum to, to put up uh, the Lawrence County Revolutionary War Tour together, which is, uh, there are 14 battles between, uh, between Kings Mountain and, and Cowpens, which was our big victory, which sent the Brits uh, north, but they were hurt. And, uh, and uh, those sites are now being recognized uh, nationally and, and being excavated as we speak. And uh, there's these plaques that are going to be going in explaining the history of the place and the location. And I'm working with a group of people to do the illustrations uh, for the which is some of my advertising background, but also academic background, because you kind of have to understand the history and be able to imagine it through these institutions. Um, uh, and, uh, and, and communicate it to, to the public. And it's important that we all learn these things. And I was recently just in 96 doing some research, and uh, it's amazing what, how that's been recreated. It's not that, that there isn't a lot of history down here. It's just that it hasn't been curated in the same way that it has in the Northeast and maybe California and places where, where um, the communities really have to come together and recognize that that's an important spot. And there's, there's a long history of, of, of the mill here, but also the mill village and the, the different iterations of the, the mill. It wasn't just the one, uh, the big one, uh, and then the, and four, and the, there was a, there's a very humble mill here in 1750, the stone of which is in the, in the dam, um, which you can see. Uh, so, so the, the, and going back to the bison, using this as a crossing and the Cherokee, and this is a, a place of great historical travel. Um, Augusta, 25, is uh, having spent a lot of time between Florida and New York. I understand how the Dixie Highway was, was built and, and to bring cars down to Florida and up and down the Northeast, and and uh, so there's there's those roads are still there. And not only were they famous then during whatever times, but it's 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 the long road that goes back to, to before we came here. And uh, the, the things that have happened along this corridor that are going up to the starting of the Appalachians and is 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 historical and and beautiful and and. You know, when you're overseas, you're romanticized, you know, the Grand Canyon, and you think of the wheat fields in Kansas, and you think of, you know, this is part of the South, that, that, that this is the, or the, the, the mountains, the, the Smoky Mountains, uh, that's part of, we've driven up that Blue Ridge Highway since we were kids, um, going different places. Uh, that's, that's part of the iconic American landscape. And, um, but that's not really, you know, we came down here for family, and all this just happens to be here. And, and, it's, and uh, it's beautiful, and thank you. When I was teaching, I'm a teaching artist, which is, kind of, this is I've done this before, I've done this at certain times, I've, I've, I've taken a year, a year and a half off at certain times because of art commitments, and, but I always felt I was a teacher. And uh, the thing about teaching artists is that you're sort of in, not in both worlds. And, uh, but also, I, I, was, had, I said this to all, all everybody I worked with, basically, is that all teachers are artists, um, but not all artists can teach. So, you know, that's why you pay the band after they play the wedding. That's why, you know, there's, artists are notoriously unreliable because of the, the, the tradition, and uh, that happens. But, but certain artists are teachers, and, and but the thing about all teachers are artists is because I think that all people have something that they practice, whether it's writing or... or, or or singing, or playing an instrument, or, or, or fixing things. There's an art form, cooking, uh, the culinary arts. One of my best students loved 3D stuff, and he ended up as a pastry chef at a restaurant I'm not going to say the name of. But it was just brilliant, because that was what he was good at. And, uh, and uh, so all people have these, these things that they practice that they do. And I think that we get bogged down in, in a lot of 
modern living and uh, these things go by the wayside and makes us bitter and upset and we make poor choices, bad decisions. Um, and we should really take time to practice those things because they ground you and they get you. They also, they also um, you know, being a writer, you'll understand this, and, and a, a painter and a writer, a poet and a, and a painter, we say, is uh, they're kind of lonely crafts. They're, they're things you practice on your own. You don't want a lot of people around. It's not a musician. There's not theater people who need, who need people around. Um, but uh, even a musician, you've got to have a couple, rhythm, something. Um, but drawing and painting and, and or writing and, and drawing are, uh, are things you practice on your own and, and, you sh and you share them to get other people to practice those things with you. Mostly on your, on your own. Uh, people need to practice um, things that they enjoy doing. And, and, and as a teacher, I really enjoy um, encouraging others to do that. Um, especially, in, you know, when, when you teach the lower, um, when you teach younger children, um, they have that. They, they want that. They, they like that. They're curious. They do it. Um, something happens in middle school and then, and then high school was challenging but it was interesting to reach out to all the kids that were in your art class and some of the schools that required the classes and, and find ways that, that, that drawing or writing can apply to other parts of their life that they like. Um, because if you think about it, you know, what you're really doing is, is you're writing or what you're really doing is you're drawing, uh, if you're a sports person, you're, you're understanding plays better. If you're, you know, there's just, just a lot of um, crossover. Um, and that's what was the drive uh, as a teacher for so long. But I realized also as an artist, especially wanting to do these tankas and these books, is I want to oh, be able to communicate these different formats to an American audience, to a Western audience. Uh, you know, these are also stories that are timeless. So, so you're passing on these things through an American where can people see more of your work if people want to see your work? Is there, do you have, uh, what's the best place for people to see your work? Yeah, right now I have a lot of work in Washington, D.C., and I have two paintings. One at, on, on 1875 K Street that's, on this, that's permanently in the building, in the lobby, and uh, the, the gallery that, that I work with, Studio A. Um, there will be a picture of the medallion, the ornament, uh, in, the, in, the, in the museum uh, when it opens up. And, I have, um, I have stuff in, in international collections, um, but a lot of my work is in private collections. But no, I have a piece in a museum in China. But it's, 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 it's um, I've been moving around a lot and focused on teaching and learning. And I feel like, um, oh yeah, yeah, well yeah, we have a, I have a website that I have I've had for a long time. Um, it's, it's a, uh, it's my last name. It's Perez Rubio with a hyphen dot com. Um, you're welcome to see more of my work there. Uh, I also have a Perez Rubio gram, a Perez Rubio, and I'm on Facebook. And, and uh, I've been out of the social media for the last eight years in particular because uh, the, the, in, in China in particular, you need a VPN to get overseas and, and uh, it's different. So I've been, we've been moving around a lot, uh, which has been fascinating. Um, but the best part is stopping. The last thing that happened was you get to a certain age and uh, four suitcases and a cat, it just becomes, and traveling, uh, you have to make certain choices with the time that you have. Um, and I really feel like it's, it's a great time to be, to be home and in an exciting um, town and settle for, for the remainder. And not, not you know, and, and work from here. Um, Oh, my, my studio has always been my classroom. I used to, for a while, I was renting a studio, had a mortgage, and I had a classroom. But I was always in my classroom. So the whole idea of having a studio and running a shop is, is part, I'm in a great place in my career. I'm really grateful that I don't do, I'm a terrible businessman, especially as, an, as a teacher. Um, so I have, I have people that are handling that, uh, and I just have to work. And uh, I'm grateful for that. And, um, but I, I want to... I think you know you don't live forever, and uh, in terms of the work that I've done and the the, the urban landscape in particular, um, not just with regards to history and, and the spiritual aspect of, of the work, um, this is a fascinating area to set up a studio for the for the remainder. I hate to to talk that way, but you have to you have to be responsible, and uh, you know all expats come home. I was having this conversation with so and so's daughter who's overseas in Africa, and so and so's son that's overseas, and 
And, and you know, the truth is that all expats come home. If you don't, uh, it's a different story. But, but everybody gets to a point where you have to go back to, to where you're from um, and, where you, where you, and, and, and uh, the things you know. And we try to make friends, um, and it doesn't always work out. And then there are these big geopolitical things that happen, and pandemics, and, and wars, and uh, they move people. And, you know, not just us coming here, and, and, but we've always been very welcoming as a country uh, in the right way. Um, we, we do our best. And, and I, we felt really, not just my family being here, but everyone's been very welcoming. Uh, in, this, in, in, in the community, and uh, I'm grateful for that too.